Today we're going to be taking a look at Cypress 10, a pull request made to make a slight improvement to Cypress 10, and then we're going to be doing a quick code review and then making a slight refactor. And finally, reflecting on the changes and seeing if they're better, worse, or just talking about some of the trade-offs. I'm going to show you Cypress 10 quickly, then show you the feature we're working on, and then we're going to jump into the refactor. So as you can see, this is Cypress 10. It's pretty similar to Cypress 9, works exactly the same. Uh, one of the main differences is you have the specs inside of the actual runner, here they are. There's another feature where you can create a new spec right here in the runner. So if I click on new spec, it's actually going to let me create a new spec. The feature or the pull request we're going to be reviewing actually made a change to this modal. You can see the component name is automatically highlighted here. So I can just go ahead and type my new component name. And this was the improvement that was made. Prior to this PR, you'd have to go ahead and select this manually, which is pretty finicky and annoying. So we're going to take a look at the code that implemented this and then make a small refactor. First things first, I'm going to actually start running the tests and that's going to give us a nice quick feedback loop. And if I recall correctly, they're inside of create spec modal. So I'm going to go ahead and find that spec. Now that we've got that, let's take a quick look at the code and then start making our refactor. So over here we can see the test which is fairly uninteresting and now we have the actual production code here. And basically it's doing a few different things. When the component is mounted it's going to grab the input, so that's the input where you type in your spec name. It's then going to use this horrible regular expression, or at least I'm not very good at regular expressions, to attempt to select the file name. It's then going to see if there's a match, so this regular expression has succeeded and then it's going to correctly highlight the correct location. And we're going to take a look at this and see how we can sort of dig into it. And as we refactor, it's going to reveal some of the test cases that we are missing here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to head back to my editor for now and start taking a look at the code. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at what's happening inside of OnMounted. We're actually doing two things here, or we have two concerns. The first is to do with this input ref, which is referring to the actual DOM element here. We're going to grab that and focus it. We then continue down and do this regular expression. If we succeed with the regular expression, we are going to highlight the DOM element. And there's kind of two concerns here. The first is purely a UI concern, which is where we're interacting with the DOM. In this case, wherever we're using input ref, which is here to focus it, and here to set the selection range. The second concern is more of kind of a business concern. Uh, it's to do with the logic of the component, and that's around the selection here, trying to fi find the name of the file and then going ahead and applying the correct one. I'd like to untangle these a little bit and I think it's going to reveal a slight improvement to the code. So the first thing I'm going to do is attempt to refactor this code out of here into a separate module and that's going to reveal some of the missing tests that we need to write. I've already created a new file over here called get spec range so we're going to be moving everything in here. First thing I'm going to do is grab all of this code and then copy and paste it inside of here. We're now going to create a function. Let's go ahead and create one now and I'm going to call this one get select range. It's going to take one argument. I'm going to say str for string. That's just going to be the, the current string. So whatever is inside of this input. Let's go ahead now and move the code inside. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually move this regular expression outside. I don't see a good reason to redeclare this every time the function is called. It's never going to change. So it's better just to declare it up here. We obviously haven't got input ref anymore and that's because we're kind of untangling the UI concerns and the business logic. We don't really care about the DOM elements at this point. We are focused on one thing, which is getting the selection range. So let's go ahead and get rid of this entirely. Input value is simply going to be the string which we're passing in. We know this is not going to be null, so we can go ahead and get rid of this null check as well. I really like getting rid of null checks and kind of keeping my code more strict I think it makes it easier to understand. The next thing we're going to do is delete this non-existent variable anymore. Finally, we have to deal with this here. If we have a match, we're going to return the correct selection. Otherwise, we're going to return null. I personally like to have my conditions the opposite way around. I like to return early, but this is really just a personal preference. Finally, we're going to go ahead and return the range here. I'm actually going to create a new type for that called range, and it's just going to be a tuple of numbers. Finally, we're going to return a range or a null type inside of here. The last thing we need to do is return our value. So start selection index and end selection index. And there we go, we've got everything nice and simple and it reveals the test case we haven't been testing. And that's this one here. What happens if null is returned? We haven't really tested this. 
In addition, we haven't really thoroughly tested this regular expression either. We do have one test for it over here, uh, which is on a single spec using uh, some specific spec name. Uh, here it is. What I would really like to see is a bunch more tests around different kind of specs that people might have. For example, uh, it's possible we change this in the future, and I'd like to know if my change is going to break anything. And right now, I only know it works for one very specific uh, spec name. And I think this is going to make it much easier to test. Prior to this refactor, we'd have to mount the component and run through all these steps every time we want to test a different regular expression. Now I can create a separate test that solely focuses on the getSelectRain function, and I'll be able to test many more variations, and they're going to run much more quickly. Finally, we just have a nice and much better separation of concerns. Let's go ahead and continue with our refactor. I'm going to import my new function and use it just to make sure everything is still working. First thing we need to do is go ahead and import it, and that's going to be right up here, get select range. And we're going to grab the function of the same name. Finally, let's go ahead now and actually use that inside of our code. I'm going to start off by deleting uh, most of this, and we're going to now see a kind of improvement as well. Just before we do that, let's take a quick look. We're doing this null check in many places. We have a null check here for input ref value. We have it here, and we have it down here. This entire function has so many null checks everywhere, and I feel like we can avoid a lot of complexity by simply removing these null checks. For example, if the input doesn't exist, we probably don't even want to execute all of this logic. We may as well just go ahead and return early. And that's exactly what we're going to do in here. I'm just going to go ahead and see if value is null, and if it is, I'm just going to return. This is going to get rid of two null checks, one down here, or three actually, one down here, and finally one down here. Now we can go ahead and move this down here as well, and that can remove the ternary operator or the, the operator from there. The next thing we're going to do is update this to use our new logic. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say const range is just equal to get select range. We're going to pass in our string. We know this string is now going to exist because we've already done the null check up here. So I can just go ahead and say get select range input ref dot value dot value. Now that we have our range, we can just go ahead and apply it. So I am going to delete both of these. Finally, I'm also going to delete both of these, and we're just going to update our code down here. We get rid of these two as well. If range is null, again, we don't want to do anything, so we can just go ahead and return early as well. Finally, we have the last thing, which is going to be actually applying this selection. Again, we can get rid of this null check here, and finally, we can just go ahead and spread over our range, and everything should hopefully continue to work correctly. Let's save it off and see what happens. With a bit of luck, everything is hopefully going to pass, and so it does. Everything is still working correctly. I think this is a little bit more readable, uh, at least in my opinion. We have a null check up here and return early, and then we continue down, focus. We have our business logic here, which is abstracted away in a separate module, and then we simply go and apply the selected range. There's a lot less misleading or complexity here without all of the null checks. We only have two. So we can see the kind of tests we need to write. We do need to write four tests in this case. We need to see what happens if the ref is null. We need to see what happens if the ref is not null. We need to see what happens if the range is null and what happens if it's not null. Currently, we only have one test and you can see it over here. So we need to write uh, two or three more. I personally would probably write one more for the UI tests. So I would have one for, uh, we have one for the happy case where everything is there. I'd probably try and add another one as well maybe where the range is null, or even possibly where the input is null, although I'm not sure this can ever happen. Finally, for the range case, I'd probably add that test inside of my other module. It's going to be much faster and easier to test, and that's going to allow us also to express a greater range of regular expression matches, which we haven't really done so far. Again, regular expressions are really gnarly, and I feel like these are basically right only. It's very difficult to really understand this unless you really know what you're looking at. So my general strategy is just writing lots of tests. So that way, if anyone has to touch this in the future, the tests will hopefully guide their development. Anyway, uh, we've reached the end of this refactor. I'm not saying this is a significant improvement or, or anything like that. I think there's different, definitely different trade-offs here. One of the trade-offs of this kind of uh, approach where you separate everything out is you end up with a lot more code. You can see here, we actually have more lines of code here or a very similar amount and we have a bunch of code over here as well. We're also going to end up with a lot more test code, so it's not generally going to be uh, all positive trade-offs here. I do feel like this is a better approach if you uh, want to be more thorough. However, 
there's always going to be trade-offs and this does ultimately take a little bit more time to write as well. So there's no right or wrong here. It's just a different idea. And I wanted to share my philosophy around this particular aspect of development. Definitely interested in how other people approach this as well. So please let me know what you think. Anyway, we've now reached the end of this refactor. I hope to be back to making more videos from now on, uh, mainly about refactoring open source code bases such as Cypress and Vue. And for now, I'm going to call it here. I'll see you in the next video.